The Walna and Swayze Observatory. Perched on a forgotten hilltop in East Cleveland, it was named for Worcester Warner and Ambrose Swayze, a pair of successful industrialists and amateur astronomers who moved from Chicago to Cleveland in 1880. It was then that the two partners established the Warner and Swayze Company to manufacture machine and precision tools. The close friends also built their homes next to each other on Euclid Avenue in Cleveland, on the infamous street known as Millionaire's Row. Over time, the Warner and Swayze Company received international acclaim from their telescope productions. One of their first telescopes they designed, and built, was the Lick Observatory Refractor, with the assistance of Alvin Clark and Sons, who made the 36-inch objective lens, shown here in an 1889 drawing. It is still housed in the University of California's Lick Observatory today. At the time, it reigned as the world's largest refracting telescope and garnered important discoveries from notable figures such as Albert Einstein and his general theory of relativity to the confirmation of the accelerating expansion of the universe. When the company established itself in Cleveland, a large factory was built on Carnegie Avenue and East 55th Street to manufacture turret lathes and telescopes. Their products found military uses during both world wars and they built a number of telescopes for leading observatories. It was said that there were even tunnels underground, connecting all the buildings. Remnants of one of the once four block long facilities are still visible today. And as of 2021, it looks as though the factory may be preserved and turned into workforce industrial apartments with new investments made recently by Dave's Supermarket, University Hospitals, and Link 59. In 1894, after constructing the company headquarters, Warner and Swayze went on to build the observatory off Euclid Avenue for personal use. Over time, this storybook-looking observatory has become a destination spot for urbex explorers alike, and is highlighted on several such websites and urbexing blogs. The original structure, designed by Cleveland firm Walker and Weeks, was situated about 270 feet above Lake Erie's sea level, and housed a nine and a half inch refractor telescope. The observatory was constructed from concrete and finished in red brick with stone trimmings inlaid with Art Deco ornamentation, and featured several astrological and astronomical accents throughout. It initially contained one observatory dome, a reception room, library, laboratories, dark room, and offices. Warner and Swayze became trustees of Case Institute of Technology around 1900 and made many gifts to the institution, including their personal observatory. In 1919, Warner and Swayze donated the observatory to the Case Western Reserve University. The observatory, which opened in 1920, was equipped with the original Warner and Swayze built 9.5 inch refractor telescope. According to Case Western records, in 1916, the land for the observatory was valued at $8,250, and by 1920, it was valued again at $87,000. Today, Telescopes use mirrors to reflect light from objects in space to form an image, while older refracting telescopes utilized a lens to refract or bend light and render an image to the viewer. In 1939, a much more powerful telescope was manufactured, then gifted by the Warner Swayze Company to the observatory in 1941. The 24-inch telescope, known as the Burel Schmidt, is still in use today. In 1941, the observatory constructed a second dome to house the new telescope. At that time, it was also decided to add an astronomical library and lecture hall to the site. Dated 1940 in honor of Worcester Reed Warner, an inlaid stone plaque was added to the north wing of the building and inscribed. By his wife and daughter, for the extension of knowledge and the service of those who, as did he, gained delight and inspiration from the unfolding mysteries of the skies. Important research, including the classification of carbon and M-type stars, were discovered here in 1949 by the observatory's then director, Jason Nassau, with groundbreaking studies that continued into the early 1950s. One study proved the theory that the Milky Way was a spiral galaxy, 
Another discovered that cooler stars, also known as red giants, were mainly located near the center of the Milky Way. And the image of the intracluster light in the Virgo supercluster was also created here. So what happened to the observatory that left it to its current state of decay? The main cause, increasing light pollution from Cleveland, which impeded the center's ability to make observations of the night sky, and is a common problem for observatories located near cities. By the 1950s, the Warner Swayze Observatory was fully overwhelmed by the nearby light pollution. So, Case Western Reserve acquired a new site in Geauga County, and a facility was constructed some 30 miles or 48 kilometers to the southeast, known today as Nassau Station. The Burel Schmidt stayed in operation at Nassau Station from 1957 until 1979, when, in 1978, the faculty of the Astronomy Department signed an agreement with AURA, the Association of Universities for Research in Astronomy, to build a new observatory to house the telescope in Arizona. The Burel Schmidt was again transferred from Ohio's Nassau Station to Arizona's Kitt Peak National Observatory, which is still in operation today. Meanwhile, the Warner and Swayze Observatory was outfitted with a 36-inch reflector telescope. Revered as one of the nation's finest telescopes for public viewing, it operated for more than 20 years until the observatory closed permanently and the telescope was moved to Geauga's Nassau Station. The Warner and Swayze Company ran in Cleveland and research continued at the Taylor Road Observatory until they were both acquired in 1980 by the Bendix Corporation. The remaining staff and resources were then transferred to the main campus of the Case Western Reserve University. After closing in 1980, the original 9.5 inch refractor telescope was put into storage by the astronomy department, and in 1986, it was reinstalled in a new dome on the roof of the Case Western Reserve University's Albert W. Smith Building and is still fondly known as the Rooftop Telescope. In 2003, observations using the Burel Schmidt Telescope in Arizona led to the discovery of the Andromeda 8 galaxy, which revolves around the more famous Andromeda Galaxy. The Warner and Swayze Observatory was sold again in 1983, but was abandoned that same year and remained neglected until 2005 when real estate tycoon Nair al Madi purchased the derelict property. With plans to build a luxurious residence on the site, it would appear that the mid-century modern observatory was finally getting an opportunity for restoration. But in 2007, al Madi was sent to prison after being convicted for mortgage fraud once again leaving this timeless observatory abandoned with no plans for revival. Despite its contributions to science, this centuries-old building has seemingly been left to the elements and vandals. In 2018, an attempt to clean and restore the entrance of the second dome was carried out by Ohio explorer and urbex cataloger Johnny Jew. His adventures can be seen on Instagram and at architecturalafterlife.com. A video is also featured on his website showing a time lapse of how they clean the second main floor. You can find the link to this in the description below. And although the observatory has sat abandoned in ruin, Worcester Warner and Ambrose Swayze have been immortalized for their contributions to astronomy. Craters on the moon have been named after each man, and the 992 Swayze asteroid was named after Ambrose Swayze. It's unfortunate to see such a beautiful architectural landmark left to ruin, and it's widely hoped that the now 127-year-old observatory one day has its renaissance from a benefactor interested more in preserving a piece of history than destroying it.
That's all for now, cubbies. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Join us for our next adventure or browse some of our previous expeditions. See you next time.